Theater. To select a movie, click on one of the five movie icons displayed across the bottom of the screen. To play the chosen movie, click on one of the four play buttons displayed on the right side of the screen. Use the scroll buttons to display additional movie icons. Brainstem. Pituitary. Cerebellum. Occipital lobe. Parietal lobe. Temporal lobe. Frontal lobe. Brainstem. Pituitary.
for body imaging and exploration. Click directly on the body to begin exploring. To move the pelvis. The pelvis serves to support the upper body and to protect the lower abdominal and pelvic organs. It consists of the two large hip bones and the sacrum. The sacrum is the triangular Let's play Body Recall. Click on one of the 12 tiles to see what lies underneath it. Remember what you see. Concentration is the key. The object of the game is to match each picture with its name or with its function. Lungs. liver heart kidneys Great job. Elbow. Pelvis. Shoulder. Knee. Ankle. Vertebrae. Well done. Gallbladder. Ear. Intestines. 
uterus. Great job, Doctor. Save the patient. It's up to you. Doctor, we just received four new admissions and they are all in serious condition. To interview a patient, get more information or start a procedure, just click on the appropriate console. Click to start. Doctor, I was bitten by a crazy dog yesterday and I'm really scared. The bite hurts a lot. I wasn't even doing anything to the dog. My mom's worried I might get rabies. She said you were going to stick me in the stomach with a bunch of really big needles. Can I leave now? You have been transported into the patient's brain. Find and zap all of the viruses to cure him. Remember, your patient was bitten by a mad dog just yesterday. Avoid damaging healthy cells. Hurry! Time is of the essence. Great job! You cured the patient of rabies. Rabies is a viral infection of the nervous system. The virus is transmitted to humans by rabid animal bites. Many cases are the result of dog bites. Raccoons and bats are other common carriers. Worldwide, there are an estimated 15,000 cases of rabies each year. There are very few cases in the U.S., however, largely as a result of intensive efforts to vaccinate dogs. Untreated cases are usually fatal. Treatment is given to patients when there is reasonable suspicion of rabies exposure following an animal bite. The primary treatment involves a several week course of anti-rabies antibody shots. The treatment works by enabling the body to eliminate all the rabies viruses before the disease develops. Fortunately, the medicine has changed and it is no longer administered through the stomach.
Oh, oh, that hurts. Don't poke me in the belly like that. Oh, my stomach has been hurting since yesterday morning. I vomited twice yesterday and now I have diarrhea. Today I even collapsed at work because I felt so lightheaded. Doc, please help me. I'm feeling really sick. You have been transported to the patient's lungs. You will need to go exploring to find all the viruses. Your mission is to eliminate the viruses in order to cure her. Remember, she has been suffering from nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea for two days. Avoid zapping healthy cells. Hurry! Oh no! You zapped a red blood cell! Red blood cells make up about 40% of the blood volume. When doctors measure this number, it is called the hematocrit. Sometimes the number of red cells in the blood goes down, either because too few cells are being made or because they are being destroyed prematurely. This is called anemia. Under normal circumstances, a red cell stays in circulation for about 120 days before it is removed. Marvelous work! You cured the patient of gastroenteritis. Gastroenteritis is a common cause of abdominal pain and vomiting. It is caused by any of a large number of different viruses or bacteria that a person may be exposed to by consuming contaminated food or water. This case of gastroenteritis was caused by a rotavirus infection. Symptoms can vary from mild to very severe. Generally, gastroenteritis lasts only a few days and resolves without any problems. Treatment depends mostly on replacing lost fluids. It's time to see another patient. Thank you. 
Doc, I've been feeling terrible for three days now. I can hardly move. Never been this sick before. I have a high fever. I'm having a hard time breathing. I keep coughing and coughing. Hardly anything ever comes up. Tylenol helps make my fever go down, but I still feel like I'm going to drop dead. Please help me. I just don't know what to do. You have been transported to the patient's heart. You will need to go exploring to find all the viruses. Your mission is to eliminate them all in order to cure the patient. Great job! You cured the patient of pneumonia. Most cases of pneumonia are caused by either bacteria or viruses. In this case, the patient's illness was caused by an influenza virus infection. This is a very unusual cause of pneumonia. Although there is no specific therapy for this viral illness, it is difficult to distinguish influenza virus pneumonia from the more commonly seen bacterial pneumonias. This patient would thus have been treated with antibiotics as if he had a bacterial pneumonia, such as pneumococcal pneumonia. A failure to respond to antibiotics as expected is often the clue that signals doctors to look for an unusual viral cause, as in this case. It's time to see another patient. Doc, for the past few months, whenever I walk up the stairs in my house, I feel pressure in my chest. Pain has been getting worse lately. Sometimes I even feel pain in my jaw, my left shoulder. And when it's really bad, I have to sit down for a while. The pain seems to go away. I don't know what to do, Doc. This is making it hard just to get through the day. Thank you. 
You have been transported into the patient's stomach. Find all of the cholesterol plaques in the patient's arteries and zap them. This will relieve the patient of his disabling chest pain. It will also eliminate the abnormal whooshing sound heard in the patient's neck. Avoid zapping healthy cells as it will cost you valuable time. Very well done. You cleared the cholesterol plaques from the patient's arteries. The patient had symptoms of angina pectoris. Angina occurs when the oxygen supply to the heart muscle is inadequate to meet the heart's demands. The heart is deprived of oxygen and the patient experiences pain. Most commonly, angina occurs with mild stress or exercise. Angina is caused by narrowing of the coronary arteries, usually due to a buildup of cholesterol plaques. The pain can be relieved with medication, but definitive treatment requires intervention to restore normal blood flow to the heart muscle. Coronary balloon angioplasty and coronary artery bypass grafting are the most common methods of definitive treatment. Congratulations! Now see if you can cure all the patients faster. Rotavirus. The illustration at left shows a single rotavirus. Worldwide, it is one of the most common viruses that can infect the digestive system and cause gastroenteritis. The rotavirus is easily spread from person to person in a family or other group setting. Rotaviruses are also found in a number of animal species. Rotavirus infection is particularly problematic in infants and young children. And it is responsible for many... The lungs. The lungs are a vital organ which enables the body to obtain oxygen from the air we breathe and to eliminate carbon dioxide. The structure of the lungs can be likened to a branching tree. Starting with the trachea, windpipe, the respiratory tree branches initially to form two main bronchi, airwaves, that enter the right and left lungs. The main bronchi then branch again and again, first forming smaller bronchi and then even smaller bronchioles. At the end of the smallest bronchioles, there are tiny grape-like air sacs called alveoli. It is in the alveoli that oxygen comes into contact with the red blood cells that will carry it to all parts of the body. In the rare cases, when influenza goes on to cause pneumonia, 
The alveoli tend to fill up with water and cellular debris. This prevents the red blood cells from picking up oxygen and causes hypoxia. Hypoxia simply means low oxygen. This is the main problem for patients with pneumonia. The respiratory lining. The photograph at left shows a portion of the lining of the upper respiratory tree. The lining consists of two main types of cells, goblet cells and ciliated cells. The goblet cells secrete a sticky mucus which coats the respiratory lining and traps foreign particles. The ciliated cells, shown in orange, have numerous tiny hairs, cilia, on their surfaces which continuously beat in unison. This action sweeps the sticky mucus with its trapped particles up and out of the lungs. Influenza viruses invade and ultimately destroy large numbers of the cells which line the respiratory tree. This of course impairs the function of the lining and causes people with influenza to cough. It also makes people more susceptible to other infections since they are less able to sweep out other potential invaders. Of note, cigarette smoking is also very toxic to the cells of the respiratory lining. This accounts for the chronic coughing and increased susceptibility to upper respiratory infections seen in smokers. Influenza virus. There are three main types of influenza viruses, named type A, B, and C. The schematic illustration at left shows a single influenza virus. Among the most notable features are the little spikes, shown in white, that stick out from the viral surface. The exact nature of the spikes, glycoproteins, determines the type of the influenza virus. Immunity to influenza occurs when the immune system makes antibodies that bind to these glycoprotein surface spikes. Unfortunately, the type A and to a lesser extent type B influenza viruses are unstable with new versions appearing every year. When a new version appears, the antibodies still circulating in the body from the last bout of influenza will be less effective at eliminating the virus and the person may get ill once again. Occasionally, an influenza virus will appear that is so radically new that virtually no one is immune to it. When this occurs, the result is a worldwide flu outbreak called a pandemic. Influenza virus. 
The photograph at left shows a single influenza virus. Influenza viruses are responsible for the respiratory illness popularly named the flu. This illness is spread from person to person through the air by virus-infected water droplets that are sneezed or coughed up. Influenza generally occurs in local outbreaks. Outbreaks tend to occur in the winter months, spreading rapidly through places where many people congregate, such as schools, offices, and nursing homes. The typical case of influenza is characterized by fever, muscle aches, headache, loss of appetite, cough, and...